following is a list of the universal fears reactivated by a brain injury induced regression. First is the threat to the integrity of the self. Integrity of the self refers to a basic sense of well-being, bodily integrity and strength, all of which are shaken by a brain injury. 25-year-old John denied the seriousness of his seizures and the existence of post-injury thinking or judgment problems. He boasted of his verbal abilities and intentions to capitalize on his attractive physical appearance by becoming a male model. At the same time, he avoided social or academic contact with peers, instead preferring solitary exercise activities. The brain injury-related threat to his self-integrity added to a prior sense of deep inadequacy resulting in a defensive, grandiose attitude. The emotional pain of directly acknowledging and dealing with his deficits was intolerable, so John tenaciously clung to a defensive, hyperinflated self-image, which he could only maintain by remaining socially isolated. The next fear is the fear of separation. This is especially common in people with visible, permanent, severe disabilities, and the fear is of being rejected and abandoned by spouse, children, friends, and other family. Often, this fear becomes a reality, resulting in despair at the loss of these important relationships. In addition, earlier life experiences of emotional and physical abandonment are reactivated. Let's talk about Sarah. Her slow, slurred speech and paralyzed right arm and leg suffered in a stroke and traumatic brain injury, left Sarah in a dependent, incapacitated, and vulnerable position. This reactivated terror, rage, and despair stemming from Sarah's childhood emotional neglect and abandonment by her mother while her father sexually molested her. The revived feelings resulted in Sarah's angry, desperate clinging to hospital staff as well as to a deep mistrust of and fear of injury by some of her caretakers. The next fear is the fear of loss of love and approval. Jack was despondent over his incapacities. His brain injury left him unable to financially support his wife and children, satisfy his wife sexually, and relate patiently to his children. The strong sense of shame and despair Jack currently felt was rooted in his early life failure to win approval from parents who unrealistically expected him as a young child to assume care for his younger sister. The next is a fear of loss of control of developmentally achieved functions. This includes loss of control of the bowel, bladder, feelings and thoughts resulting from a brain injury. The amount of distress over loss of control of these abilities depends on childhood experiences surrounding achievement and loss of control of these functions. For example, Alan was mortified at the frequent tearful outbursts that followed his brain injury. He recalled being shamed by a first grade teacher for wetting his pants in class and chastised as a child by his parents for any expression of intense emotions. The next fear is the fear of loss of or injury to body parts. Fears of permanent disabilities may resonate with early childhood fears of injury to or loss of body parts viewed as punishment and retaliation for desiring an exclusive sexualized relationship with one parent and associated wishes to get rid of the other parent. An injured man may unconsciously view his disability as a symbolic castration, feminization, and subsequent vulnerability to attack by other men. Let's talk about Bill. To cope with a passive, weakened state which threatened his masculinity, construction worker Bill flirted with women caretakers and boasted to his children about how bravely he endured painful diagnostic procedures. The next fear is the feelings of guilt and shame and fear of retaliation for previous transgressions. Many people view their disabilities as punishment for previous sins of omission or commission. For example, being too needy, too greedy, neglectful, disobedient, or hurtful to parents as a child. Jean believed that her accident and injuries were divine retribution for the ingratitude and rage she felt as a child toward her parents who she experienced as neglectful and depriving. Tom viewed his head and spine injuries as punishment for an accident he had caused 10 years previously. While drunk, Tom drove his car broadside into a police car, injuring the officers. 